Welcome back to It's Your Law. Jack Kelly and I are having a conversation which isn't unusual. We've been friends and adversaries many, many times. And between us, we've probably done condemnation work for about 80 years, <laughs> maybe a little longer. But we're learning True. every day. You know, we, we know the old rules about the three ways of, of valuing the property and uh, uh, inverse condemnation and the severance and all of that sort of thing. And that changes a little bit uh, from time to time because some of this is legislatively passed, but some of it is judge-made law, contrary to what you hear. And so we have to stay on our toes. But within the last five years, we've had both eyes opened with the expansion of the government authority to condemn uh, due to blight. Let's start there. Well, the U.S. Constitution and the state of Wisconsin Constitution both say that no property shall be taken for public use uh, without the payment of uh, just compensation. Well, public use was a concept that, that everybody could understand. The property is going to be used by the public. Uh, a roadway is going to be used by uh, people dra traveling uh, in their automobiles, uh, sewers, uh, schools, dams, uh, parks, those sorts of things will be used by the public. Well, a number of years ago, there was a case called Kelo versus New Britain, Connecticut, uh, in which the issue was whether or not a town or a city can take private property uh, under a redevelopment authority and give it away to private developers who are going to do something with it for their benefit. <clears throat> in New Britain, they had uh, adopted a redevelopment authority and they had uh, talked uh, generally about uh, engaging in processes that would uh, increase the tax base and would uh, find jobs for the fine people of New Britain. All worthy goals. Uh, but what happened was they took away you know, 10 or 15 uh, properties from uh, people who were homeowners. These were not blighted properties. They were nice single-family residences. They were taken, turned over to a private developer who I then think put in a series of high-rise condominiums or uh, apartment buildings that were worth many, many more millions than the uh, value of the properties that were taken. So the, the Kilos didn't like that. They took it uh, through the state courts and up to the U.S. Supreme Court, which held in a 5-4 very thin majority that, yes, public purpose should be the standard, not necessarily public use. And if a redevelopment authority is in position, and if the project is likely to increase uh, real estate taxes, which would be good for everybody, uh, and uh, provide jobs, that is a public purpose that would justify the taking of the property, even though it's going to be turned over to private developers who are going to make it a private uh, project. Now, this decision was unexpected, and it sent literally shockwaves through the United States. Many uh, states uh, passed a new legislation that was designed to um, redefine what could be done and what couldn't be done. Some of it was very anti-U.S. Supreme Court legislation. Others was designed to jump on the bandwagon to make sure that they had the ability to fit, you know, through the pegs and through the squares and, and to make this work. Uh, Wisconsin has expanded its notions of what public uh, purpose is uh, and uh, one of the big controversies right now is uh, the aftermath of the Hurricane Sandy uh, tragedy out in the East Coast. Miles and miles and miles of waterfront property that was inhabited by small, single-family residences and cottages, sometimes very modest in their means, but they've been in the families for years and years and years, have been devastated. And they probably are uh, uh, blighted. They're repairable and fixable. But a lot of those communities are very, very fearful that the municipalities are going to say, this is blighted property, we want to tear down 50 of these houses, turn them over to a private developer who will put up a very large uh, building or a very large complex that will attract people, provide us with jobs, and raise the overall tax base. So those people are fighting very hard locally, they're fighting very hard in the legislatures in New York and in uh, New Jersey to make sure that that doesn't happen. Not only that, there are decisions that say if you have a very special property within a blighted area, the tail goes along with the hide. You, you may have something that's been in your family for three generations and uh, it may even have some historical value. If they declare that the area 
is That's blighted, right. your property goes too. Now that has upset an awful lot of people who used to think that uh, uh, the reason many people came to this particular piece of land several hundred years ago is so they could have land, home, right that nobody could take away from them. Now, well, they're finding out that's not quite so true. And that is true. Uh, if you're talking about historic structures, uh, one way would be to uh, try and get a uh, designation that it's a, a historically significant property. Uh, what has to go hand in hand with that is that the local municipality has to have some sort of protective ordinance that protects uh, historically significant properties. But generally speaking, if a city wants a particular area redeveloped, and let's say it's for entirely private purposes, they can craft things in a way that will make sure, they'll dot all the I's and cross all the T's, and they can make sure that it'll pass constitutional muster and it'll work. And that's a sad thing. Absolutely. Right here locally, those of us who've been reading the paper realize that uh, we have a flooding problem in Oshkosh. We have a hundred year flood about every five or six years. And one of the problems is there's no place for this water to go and seep in because we've got too much hard surface, too much asphalt, concrete, uh, sidewalks and things like that. And uh, so we need some retention ponds. Well, the folks in the city don't want their valuable property to be used to prevent their flood. So the city is going to farms outside the city and say, uh, sell us your farm. We're going to make some retention ponds along Sawyer Creek so that when the rains come, we can trap some of this water and keep it from flooding uh, our more valuable property in Oshkosh. And the farmers say, wait a minute, I'm not in the city. It's not my problem. You made the problem. And the city says, but we can condemn. And they can, can't they? They can, and I know that you were involved in just such a uh, process out west of Oshkosh because we were at the city council meeting at the same time on another very important issue. Uh, but uh, that's very true. They're trying to find properties wherever they can to slow down the rate of travel of water during a flood. Um, it's, I guess in that case, that would probably clearly be a public purpose. Then the whole issue is gonna be you know, what is the compensation to be paid? Jack, we're almost out of time. This is an interesting subject. I think we can agree. If the DOT starts driving slowly in front of your property, hire a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I agree entirely. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for being on the show. My pleasure, George, as always. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen.